So I've finished rolling the edges and the body is now done and it's time for me to stick the neck in. Um, setting the neck's fairly complex and a lot of the decisions that you make can affect the tone of the final instrument. Or looking at that the other way around, you can actually adjust the tone by the way that you set a neck in an instrument. In this case, I don't know what the instrument's going to be like, so I'm going to do just a straight average neck set. There's five measurements to keep track of when you're setting the neck. You want the strings to run in a straight line, starting from the button at the top, passing over the bridge in the center of the F holes, and ending with the end pin at the bottom. And there's numerous ways that, that can go wrong um, but let's say the button is off to one side uh, you're going to end up with a kink in the string um, it won't stay like that for long the string is going to pull and straighten itself out and that's going to pull the bridge to one side the next is the pitch or projection which is an imaginary line extending the top of the fingerboard up to where it would meet um, the bridge and uh, the height above the top of the instrument is called the projection. Uh, the projection plus the height of the arch um, determine the angle that the string breaks over the top of the bridge and uh, that affects the tone. We adjust the pitch by pivoting about this point at the bottom of the fingerboard. Between that point and the top of the violin is called the overstand and that height usually six millimeters, is determined by how far the neck is set in that direction. Next is the neck length, which is a ratio of the string length. You want two parts of the string sticking out from the body at the neck and three parts of the string over the body. So that normally comes out at 130 millimeters for the neck. And finally, the tilt of the neck. For this drawing, I'm looking down from the neck towards the bridge. So the bridge sits on top, and then the top of the bridge can be tilted to that side or in the other direction. And the relative heights of the treble and the bass side affect the tonal balance of the instrument. That's the five things to keep an eye on. Let's get back to the next set. So to control the tilt of the fingerboard, um, I've set a target bridge on the top with my ideal tilt marked onto it. That's lined up with the center mark of the instrument. Um, and then I've made my little template, which lines up with the center line on the marked on the back there. Um, and you can see how when you adjust the top of this template you can you can change the tilt um, and to double check it I'll just lay my fingerboard on there and uh, sight along the top of the board and see how it how it lines up with the with the target there so now I have my template which takes care of four or maybe five of the measurements that um, I'm worried about and I'm going to mark this shape onto the neck root and plane the sides down to those lines. I'm going to start by trimming back with my long inside ground gouge. Starting to roughly shape the neck just a bit. What I want to do is get the wood from here out of the way so that I can plane this very easily. And I'm going to file that back a bit. just until it touches the edge of the fingerboard. And now 
just plane it down to the line. Still got a ways to go on that. A lot of times it's just easier to hold things so you can see what you're doing. So I've only cut through the rib so far, but uh, time to start checking measurements. Well, I'm testing the pitch. See, I'm just under 27 millimeters. I want to end up at 27 millimeters. I have this is called the overstand. I've got about six and a half millimeters there from the edge of the plate to the lower side of the fingerboard. I want to end up at six, so I'm half a millimeter over. That means at this end, at the moment, I should be measuring 27 and a half, which is slightly under, which is good. It's a good position to be in because I can easily raise the pitch by taking some wood out of the, the bottom end here of the neck joint. So the more I take out of this part, the more I take out of this part, the um, it's going to crank the neck back like that and the pitch will go up. Um, this part I can't take any more out of because I've already reached my my neck length limit. That's the direction going in and out this way. So I'm currently at 130 millimeters, which is exactly where I want it to be. So I can't take any more off of the inside of the joint here. I set my bridge so it lines up. At the center line of the instrument. Put my neck in nice and firm. And then slide down the, the bridge, trying to center everything up. And then slide down the neck. Okay, there we go. So just hold that. So then I can look straight down the neck, see if it points to the middle of the bridge. I'm looking for the same size gap on that side and that side, and I'm pretty close. I might need to nudge that a bit. When those are lined up, I can then look at the end of the fingerboard and see that my tilt from side to side like that is, is right. And then the final thing I'm checking, um, I'm putting the neck in that way as well, half a millimeter over to make it go in further. I'm taking wood from the sides here. I'm making some carbon paper and I can see that I've got not very good contact all the way along so I'm going to cut all that carbon off and that will join in better. So as I remove wood from the sides here then the neck will fall deeper into the into the mortise there and um, I'm now looking at the gap here and I can see that I have a little gap this end and not at this end so i've got to take some wood off of the neck root down there i'm about to glue the neck into the body uh, this is a critical joint uh, you really don't want it failing so 
I'm a little cautious about the tendon glue. I've noticed that it doesn't penetrate very well. Um, it tends to gel uh, before it really soaks into the wood. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up a fresh batch of glue and first I'm going to glue size it, which means uh, putting a very dilute glue onto the joint. And I'm going to let that dry. I'll, I'll refit the joint and then I'll come in with some stronger glue. And uh, I, I believe that will take care of the problem. Okay, gluing in the neck. It's always a big moment. Get everything nice and warm. It's my glue, medium thick. Side. Glue's actually feeling a little bit thinner than I would like. It might be because it's on the hot wood, I'm not sure. In it goes. Squeeze it down. As soon as you get the hot glue on there, the joint swells. So I haven't pushed it all the way to the bottom of the joint yet. Got a counterform on the back so that I don't break off the button by mistake, or conversely, push the Push the bottom of the neck right through the, the back. There, a lot of squeeze out more than I more than I really want to see. I'm still getting used to this tendon glue. Really, not quite the same as what I usually use. I think it's serviceable, but it needs managing. 